You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Dad, you're going out of here smelling like smoke. <laughs> this is podcast time. We just did uh, over an hour with uh, Bingo's parents. I kind of tricked him in the Connie Chung. Uh, <laughs> this is off the record. <laughs> Chris Hansen, them. Have a seat there. Yep. <laughs> I just no, no, sit down. <laughs> just have a seat. <laughs> you, you brought sandwiches. <laughs> you like Mike's hard lemonade for the for the Audible book. Uh, they're in town, so I thought, why not take advantage of this to do the podcast out like we do with all the Audible books with the parents about the coma? And I told him, no, Jay, we're we're just gonna just talk into the mics anyway. I just this is for my own records because I'm writing this, which is true. <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, that worked out well. But I didn't smoke the entire time, and it's brutal. Now, Dad's hanging around for some of the podcast, at least. Until he gets smoked out. Mm. Or he's tired of eating the Halloween candy. <laughs> nah, I ate all your candy. You're, you're done. I'm done. <laughs> Chaley, uh, yeah, what's, uh, what, what, what's the uh, biggest uh, seller at your haunted house for candy? Well, we uh, limited it to 50 full-size bars this year. And then Tracy over the radio, out of 50, out of the 50 bars, there's Snicker bars. So that, when that, it feels like everyone knew when that happened. Who had it open? No, no one had it open. Yeah. Well, but yeah. I didn't know. I could tell when that happened that, uh, like, gauging how many kids were coming through. What what do you have left over the most? It's right over there in that What's bag behind. What's getting relegated next next season? <laughs> they don't get a choice. If you get a Skittles next year, it's probably not fresh. <laughs> Techn- There's a lot. Technically, of- it'll probably be just a Skittle next year. <laughs> a big yeah, round a one, big hard glob inside the bag. <laughs> there are a lot of starbursts. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Brian Hennigan, Chad Shank, Greg Chaley, hey. Dad in the background, Tracy on the bar. <laughs> Which but, podcast is this? I don't, We're not on camera, are we? No. No, <laughs> no it yeah. doesn't matter. I missed everything. I missed your haunted house. I missed more Andy Andrist. I heard he was uh, just kind of subtle this mm-hmm. this trip. He was kind of like Bigfoot. You'd see him skull. You know that pic- classic picture of Bigfoot? You'd just catch him in the yard. Walking you know, away. Walking away. <laughs> it was, it was way, uh, way more subdued, Andy. Although I did... Uh, uh, I whenever I, I got busy as soon as we started doing the hunt, and I told him, I go, hey, I have uh, some weed and a grinder and some cones. I said, uh, and him and Kenny were there, and I said, if you in my jacket oh. here, if you guys want to uh, pack a couple of cones, you know, for down here, and uh, okay, and they grabbed my jacket and came up to the fun house, and then about an hour and a half later, I had to send my wife. I go, go up there and tell them, just say. Chad said that when he told you to roll cones, he meant to bring them the fuck back down here. <laughs> and uh, Andy, sure enough, showed up going, oh, I didn't know. I, we were just up there smoking them. I didn't know you wanted some. Of your uh, weed. So he was still Andy. <laughs> it's just a more subdued for, level. For Dad, uh, a cone is, uh, have you ever had a hand roll at sushi? It's a joint that looks like that. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, the, the paper is, is rolled already, and you just kind of... Like spoon in the uh, ground, ground, the ground weed, it's, and I don't know why a non pot smokers. Oh, like that thing that Tracy's holding for the is, audio right podcast. There. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Andy, Andy though takes it. He used up. Uh, I had about uh, nine cones worth, and uh, Andy used it up on three cones. <laughs> Because uh, he's used to stealing them, not making them. So he packs them in there like he's in a fucking packing a musket. You can't even. You, you, they don't even stay lit. You have to light them yourself every single time. Trying to suck air through them. <laughs> fucking it. I gave him shit about it. So I don't feel bad giving him shit when he's not here. <laughs> Andrew picked him up, I guess, at the airport and said, uh, yeah, I don't know what uh, he was on that he stole, but it, it was working because he was, like, <laughs> listening to me. <laughs> so that didn't last very long. <laughs> oh, Andy. I got to hang out with him again. We had a, 
uh, Dark Knight over at Joby's house uh, the other night. He yeah. Over there. What do you mean? Was the power out or no? Was dart. It no. Oh, dark. Yeah, yeah. Dart. 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 We've we've a dart night. We've started a uh, our uh, our own little dart league here amongst the so uh, if, people without anything better to do. So uh, as if things weren't miserable enough, you're not pretending to be British. Uh, that's, <laughs> actually, that's uh, you, you're not even at all far off. Because while we were playing with Joby the last time, I was like, "Fat British guy, fat British guy." And I threw because I've been watching YouTube videos about who's good at darts, and it's all fat British guys. So I pretend I'm a fat British guy. So you're absolutely right, bro. Oh, they watch that on TV yes. in bars that have darts, and they'll be, <laughs> you'll be in a pub, and they're watching darts next to the dart board. But they're not. Who played darts first? Like who started it? Joby started talking about it with uh, Fury and Mike. We were all in on like a group text. What's uh, all your Twitch? Uh, Everyone who's yeah, on, on the, the Twitch, Twitch feed. The yeah. Twitch thing. I have a group text for that. I have more group texts than I ever fucking imagined I would have in my life. <laughs> it's weird how our minds work because when you asked who started it, I asked, I, I, my head was going, must have been the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing, but I didn't go to the Romans. <laughs> Uh, you you were thinking of the more interesting answer, and uh, I went for the one I knew. I've never had this. Ever been an alternative answer? Was it the Romans or Jason Fury? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Joby went ahead and built himself this uh, like jagged edged, uh-huh. badass looking backboard for the darts with a uh-huh. little shelf for your darts and uh-huh. stuff. And uh, is then he built one for each one of us. Oh my god! So we each have the exact same dart backboard, and uh, so far we've gone over to uh, Joby's for darts. We've gone to Fury's, and uh, we've uh, had him over to my house. Uh, oh, that was smart. He uh, made it for everyone, so it's not it's every not week in his, his house. house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I thought too. <laughs> It's, it's been a really a productive thing though because it's a lot of us it's, it's uh we we're all shut ins and we don't have people over at all and so then we don't do any of the shit that normal people do for like maintenance because we don't care because we just learn to live with it like when we went to furies he was like man i'm glad you guys came over my uh uh toilet has been running for like three months and i didn't even you know bother to fix it because by the time i Come back in there. I just, you know, it's already full again. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. Because, but I fixed my toilet, and Jenny made me paint the kitchen in the, the dining room area before I put the dart board up. And Mike <laughs> is getting something. I'm like, look, it's a positive effect from our dart. Uh, Who's Mike? Uh, oh, you had a prisoner, 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 Mike. Prisoner, oh, yeah, Mike. prisoner Mike. Yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, you haven't been out there yet, right? We're going out there this weekend. Yeah, that's going to... They're off grid. He lives off grid. We, we When he came in, he was like, our whole house is like the size of your guys' living room. <laughs> so we're all going to... We're all... The, I'm the smallest one. Well, Mike's the smallest one, but Joby and Fury are both bigger than I am. And so we're all just going to be crammed in. <laughs> Maybe they'll... Do they have a big tree? You can, yeah, we can go lean outside. the dartboard up against the tree. Yeah. yeah. be nice. How far away is this place? Uh, not far, just outside Bisbee. All right, okay. he's yeah, in yeah. the Mule Mountains, right? Uh, yeah, like how you go by the cemetery up in the mountains yeah, back yeah. in there. Yeah. Oh, that's closer than I thought. Oh, yeah. Me too. yeah, just past I have the no other idea pizza which place. mountains or which Chiricahuas or that's... mules or. <laughs> what are the mountains you can see when you're driving on the I-10 and you're going west? Beats me. Anyone? That's the Whetstone. Is it? I think it's, I think it's Whetstone. Isn't that the before uh, you get to the. Uh, before well, you get after to the you, freeway, after you get yeah. to the ten, it, the the ones on your left, those should be the whetstone, and then the ones on the right, isn't that where Mount Lemon is? No, Mount Lemon's Tucson. Oh, that's t- closer out there. Yeah, there's some on the mountain uh, by the. Yeah, I don't remember. Mount Lemon is fucking incredible. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. That's right there. Yeah. Did you go up to the observatory? Uh, and I went to the top of the little town there. Was there a telescope? I had some breakfast. The uh, ski resort. They, they had eggs. <laughs> that, yeah, there's a ski resort up there. Yeah, yeah I, it was summer, so I didn't do that. Well, I wouldn't have done that anyway. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just some of the shit that's right on the outskirts of Tucson. That Sabino Canyon and all that. Nope. Fucking crazy well, that exists. Well, Tanky Verde, my, my cousin who lives up in uh, Scottsdale, he was talking about... I told him that we all went to Tanky Verde that one time we did the podcast. 
He's like, oh, did you do the hike? I'm like, well, no, we don't do anything when we go somewhere. We find the closest bar or we bring it in the room with us. Yeah. <laughs> but he said that's a, a great place to hike when it's a little cooler, not in the dead of, of summer like I we like, were. I well, like that's why we got to go there. Yeah, I that's think, why it was I, cheap I, I looked at the wintertime rates <laughs> there. <laughs> we're not going there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I told Jamie. Oh, oh, you're talking about the ranch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanky yeah. Verde. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he told me that uh, take that hike up near the waterfall and all that stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. No. But maybe sometime. I told you I checked out the uh, uh, guided fishing that they had there. I didn't go to the guy. I didn't do the guided fishing. They, but. Henning, and they've got like a huge ranch. Mm -hmm. And it's on the edge of Saguaro Nor National Forest. Mm -hmm. And then they've got a lot of uh, horses. You can There's rides throughout the day. The there's ranch. all these activities to do. And we went in the dead of summer. So mm -hmm. it's like 115 degrees. <laughs> and, and I looked. I'm like, oh, wow, look, there's a you can go fishing. And then we left after one night after we did the podcast, all hung over. And then Chad stayed for an extra day, and you looked into uh, going fishing as I, an activity. It was so nice there that I brought Jenny up there uh -huh. because, uh, uh, like I said, the dude ranch is 115 degrees. You could go to this pool or that pool, and nobody else was there. Uh, so we really liked it. And uh, but we hiked over there. We walked all over the place, and we went down to the fishing uh, pond. It's a fucking sewage treatment <laughs> pond. <laughs> It's got the aerators blow. It smells like shit. I was like, who is fishing here? <laughs> Fucking tourists. The local youth, I imagine. Uh, <laughs> the tourists pay good money to get taken fishing in the shit pond. Uh, what, when I was taking care of uh, D. Bertine, the dementia lady, she's... Dementia Bertine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D. Bertine. <laughs> she lives in this gated community... And they have it's it's called like the lakes or something, uh, whatever it's called. Crossroads at the lakes. Lakes is it? But they have all these like little ponds that are like blue, like sandy flush. And yeah. I was at this Mexican place eating food at the bar, and uh, the bartender was talking to another guy saying saying the same place. He goes, "Yeah, I went fishing last night," and he's showing this guy pictures of fish he caught. And I go, did you say the whatever crossroads at the lakes? And he goes, yeah, look at. Then he's showing me the pictures. I go, there's fish in those things. They look like like decorative small. Yeah, all of them are stocked with fish. Like, it's, it's blue toilet water. It's, just, <laughs> it's like the water at like Disney World. <laughs> Like they color it so it looks like you're in the Bahamas. They use the tidy bowl man for bait. <laughs> <laughs> a bobber. That's a fucking old joke right there. <laughs> I suppose I should reach a joke. That's an old reference. Yeah, right the, there. The, the fish aren't being caught, they're hanging themselves. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're just trying to get air. Yeah. Is there air out there? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. People in the city think weird things are uh, country, I guess. Or worth spending money on. <laughs> <laughs> now, he had, a, uh, he had the same kind of situation I picked up from the other conversation where he was taking care of someone's friend's grandmother or something. And so I said, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. And he just didn't give a fuck that we had a similar story. <laughs> just, yeah, fish. You like to fish. fish. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been in way deeper than you. He thought he, like, he got a forget. backstage pass to fucking blue water fishing because he took care of his friend's grandfather. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's take a quick break and uh, plug some shit that you're a you're going to love it. Well, and I also learned I can I can stand there and flex my muscles for an hour, but if I don't pull my dick out, I'm not getting $100 in a ride to the airport. <laughs> so that's exactly the experience I've had in comedy a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's me, Brett Erickson, from the Issues with Andy podcast. Uh, we love you, Killer Termites, and we hope you'll tune in and uh, check us every Friday, Issues with Andy, on uh, YouTube. Uh, yeah, look, it's, it's, a, it's not a podcast, right? Isn't it a vod vodcast? You're right. For once, Andy, you're right. It's a vodcast, <laughs> uh -huh. which means it's a podcast. 
fueled by vodka. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. I was drinking cola. I fucked up. <laughs> and the V could also stand for video because it's a video podcast. That's it. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. I, as always, Whoa. I'm right, and Chad Shank is writer. <laughs> 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 or more right to be correctly incorrect or something. If you love the shit you're getting here on the Doug Stanhope podcast, you get more shit. With us on Issues with Andy on YouTube every Friday. And yeah, we'll, you keep listening and watching or however you do it, and we'll keep shitting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep shitting, con I mean, shitting content and not shit. That's what we'll, we do. We'll, pol we'll polish it up and call it a turd. <laughs> and you can shit on it if you hate it and love it. Yeah, thanks for watching and, and shit. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. What date do you think I should fly this on? The microphone, Andy. It's the microphone. <laughs> Which date do you think I should fly this? Untuck it. That's right. I am the king of the untucked shirt. My suits are perfect wearing an untucked shirt. My father-in-law is here with me. Ron, you're a guy with a gut. Hell do yeah. You tuck your shirt in. You're 70-something. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 71, 71 week years two. old. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You look younger than me and that hurts. <laughs> Do you get a gut? Do you, you don't tuck shirts in? Nah, hell no. No. Untuckit.com has shirts that are meant to be worn untucked. That's how they style them. They don't go down to your, your knees when you untuck them. What I say in Ron is untuck it. They fall to the perfect untucked length and with the holidays near there's no better gift for your favorite guy who needs an upgrade you ever see an untucked button down yeah it looks like shit not with untuck it untuck it plans for you this is not Mad Men years where everyone is five foot seven <laughs> with a svelte body even though they just eat butter and cheese all the time it doesn't make sense yeah you look like shit with a tucked in shirt and you look like you take yourself way too fucking serious. <laughs> Get untuck it shirts. They hang the right way and they give you this air of I don't give a fuck. That's what untuck it is all about. I don't give a fuck. I know what I'm selling here. I'm the untuck it master. It looks good. It feels good. Well, Doug, hey, part of that is because of there's more than 50 fit combinations. Untuck It shirts look great on tall, short, slim, and athletic guys of all ages and sizes. And women. What's hotter than a woman wearing the shirt that she found in your closet after a one-night stand? And she's wearing that like fucking Tom Cruise in Risky Business sliding across a floor, but it's a chick? The difference with an untuck it shirt, you can see her beaver. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fuck the ad copy. I'm going from the heart. Hey, Doug, you know, you can find your favorite untuck style online, or you can check it out in, in over 80 brick and mortar stores. They have brick and mortar stores? Brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. <laughs> untuck it shirts never look baggy, bulgy, too long, or too big. Never look sloppy again. So whether you're shopping for the perfect holiday gift or just trying to craft a smart, relaxed style of your own, Untuck It is the way to go. Visit UntuckIt.com and use Stanhope for 20% off at checkout. That's UntuckIt.com and promo code Stanhope for 20% off. All right, we're back. What do you get your tablet out for, Brian? You uh, it's just there in case. No, no, I meant your uh, your your mole skin. Oh, right. Just you, in, you, again, the same reason I have my actual tablet out just in case. Well, yeah, you, but you have it like you have notes, and you're going to tell us fantastic stories. But you're open it's, to a blank page, yeah, a, like yeah. you're going to take you, dictation. He's tablet. waiting for us to tell him fantastic stories. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's my tabla rasa. I'm waiting to hear what the fuck I missed when I uh, when I had to duck out. Like after the Andy weekend, I gotta write, and there's no even with the new edition. Yeah, I could hide away from it, but you can't. You can't. And well, for you, I think it was more that you needed to reset. This is my opinion that you needed a reset in that you needed to be alone to figure out what you were going to do because you you have you've got 
two months to write the book. Yeah. That you want, because I mean, you've got sprinkled in there some dates. Go to DougStanhope.com, tour dates. Yeah, Hawaii. And da, Vegas. Da, 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 da. But you know, we got Baltimore. Da, 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 da. We got Baltimore up and Seattle and Boston. Yep. So you can get all those dates. So, but I mean, you've, you've got a couple dates sprinkled in there and there's some 2020 dates. And I figured I felt bad because I'm like, what the fuck? We just get off the road and then he leaves. Fuck the haunted house. Let's not do this anymore. If you're going to leave. No, no. Here, This is what I wanted to say. It's not just about not being around people, especially that many people, especially some of those people. <laughs> it's about being away from your shit. Yeah. Because I, I did, even though I wasn't writing when I was in Tucson for the summer, I gave up on, but I was still at all the time in the world because there was none of my shit around. I was doing all sorts of fucking dumb things because like once you're, I'm, I'm never bored at home. There's always something that needs to be folded, moved, put away, hung up. There's always a project. No, not in a fucking best Western. <laughs> I smoked like, I smoked like a motherfucker oh. in there. I go, I'm here for six days. If they just charge me the two fifty, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm smoking. I'm writing. None right. of that shit I'll is mine. I'll pay the 250 but bear in mind, I only smoked the last day. <laughs> so it's only one charge of 250 I went to a movie. Did what? you I watch? Did, yeah, Hold I saw on. the Joker. At a Whoa! Fuck. Without me? Whoa! What the yeah. fuck? Brian's, Brian's, Brian's writing it down. It's <laughs> all <laughs> so a movie. I, you went to a movie theater. <laughs> I went to a movie theater and watched a movie without leaving to smoke. And the Joker, or Joker, smokes all the fucking time. 18 t- episodes. Uh, I started counting after three of gratuitous, deep penetration smoking in front of your fucking face. 18 <laughs> scenes. Not just 18 shots. 18 scenes where he's just smoking. And <laughs> we got cracked. Yeah. I, it was the, like the Roadhouse Cinema where they have a full menu yeah. and they have the reclining chairs like we had, the Neighbor Dave chair. Those chairs sit back, table in front of you. They cut me off. I got, uh-huh. I got cut off after my uh, my fifth drink. I assume you how bought did, out the whole theater so no one could bother you. How did they <laughs> How did they break that to you? Well, I I get a uh, get nachos and a, a double margarita, uh-huh. and then a ding halfway through. <laughs> I, I got another double margarita, and then the third time I asked for one, she went and she came back and said, "Is it okay if there's just one shot? They must have a five shot rule." <laughs> Well, yeah, this, uh, what kind of fucking amateurs? But it was, it's not a long movie. I thought it was going to be one of those three hour fucking no, epic not. things. I like thinking about the behind the scenes conversation to cut you off because the rest of the country was all nervous that it was violent. People were going to shoot up the theaters. Um, we have a man who's getting really drunk. That, that, that just Five means drinks? they need to raise their prices on liquor. I mean, to make yeah. it more uncomfortable to buy five shots right. within a two-hour period. Yeah, the rest of us smuggle our own shit in. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't upset. I was just... That's funny. Did you enjoy the Joker? I actually did. The only... I, I don't want to spoil our alert. No. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, the when he's finally gets on the show yes all right that's yeah like so implausible yes indeed yeah that he if that was morning radio yeah they would have strung that out yeah <laughs> milked the crazy but no not not the tonight show what okay. was the last movie you saw doug in the theater uh, the last movie i saw was uh when brendan walsh was uh he had rented the uh pt cruiser in uh louisville kentucky we did the week and he, I remember him pulling up in it saying, I feel like a gay Dick Tracy in this car. <laughs> and it was Jackass 2. Look up. What what's a, what year was that? Jackass 2. Oh, shit. That's a long time ago. It was probably, it was, Bingo was there, so it was probably 2005 or six. So it's probably been 13, 14 years since I went Is to a movie two or theater. three? I think it's 2008. Two, 2006. God Boom. Damn it. Got Fuck it. you, Anakin. Just- Anakin went eight. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was uh, that was bald bingo and Brett Clausen. That was, was you alive. doing a week. Yeah, that was me <laughs> doing a week. Oh exactly. Isn't Brett Clausen still alive? No, Brett Clausen died right after that week. Who's with me? We were still on the road. He jumped off a bridge. Oh, who's the first? Remember the first Death Valley party? There was two Bretts. 
Brett, Brett Allen. Oh, Brett, Brett Allen. Allen. Sorry, I'm confused. No one knows what became of him. Oh, he's Two. living. He's living in Minneapolis. I probably jumped off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no one cared. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you think you'll go to the cinema again? I would go to a roadhouse. Wait, wait, were you, were you, so you're on your own? Yeah. Right, you just sat there. Yeah. Okay. No, that's how I like to go to the cinema when there's no one else there and you're on your own. Oh, it it was, uh, I wouldn't go to a first run. It was early. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty empty. Mm -hmm, Okay. I once went to the cinema with Lynn Shawcroft. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Oh shit. And are you still banned from there? No, black but, people no. complained about her. <laughs> no, no, no. But she did storm out, and we had a falling out in the cinema because it was like a it was like, it, no, it was like a pantomimic, pantomimic sort of. Well, who's that guy? Oh, wait, wait, where did he come from? And I was like, shut up. Wait, about the audience bit, members? No, no. <laughs> bit, no, the main, the main point was this. At some point, Lynn. Uh, asked you know a a question too far and i went shh and there was this deafening silence that lasted till the end of the movie sitting right next to me and and then she let me have it outside (laughs) they were we're friends now this is a long time ago but uh yeah i can't even remember the movie was that's how traumatized I was by it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I rem- also, I remember we, went, we looked at suitcases in Ross Dress for Less beforehand, and I was trying to show her the intricacies of certain suitcases. <laughs> and she was thinking, shh. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just get the pink one. Shh. <laughs> That's uh yeah that's the Ross dress for less uh, weak spot. Oh, wow. colorful luggage. Really? That's where I got that wicked light one. Yeah. Oh. Ultra light. I think we're going to make it last the the merch bag from the last 6 weeks. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to plug through for the Florida dates with it and then abandon it in Florida. Oh. <laughs> like you do grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the room. <laughs> Actually, he has no grandkids. Dad has no grand. All the daughters are barren. Wow. Yep. That's kind good of for you, sir. Congratulations. <laughs> Chad's making up for you. Ron. Oh, <laughs> How many grandkids do you have, Chad? Uh, technically, legally, legally, uh, three at the moment. Okay. Four, four at the moment. I heard you on your Twitch tonight uh, uh, talking about uh, whatever you were talking about. You said, I don't know if I've already said this. I'm on so many platforms yeah, now. That's <laughs> Chad what, Shanks on the Twitch. That, He's on my, the Andy. That's, that's my running joke now is I used to know exactly when I spoke to another person. And now uh, I'm on the Twitch. I'm on the Issues with Andy. I'm on the Doug Stanhope podcast. Uh when I leave here, I have to go to Dart Night. <laughs> so I'm in demand. You're the Kathy Griffin of listen, obscurity. <laughs> listen. I, uh, that was probably funny 10 years ago. I don't know who's the ubiquitous one now that's on everything. She's still plugging away on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for lack of trying. Yeah. Any word on uh, Andy's special? Well, no. I mean, uh, like, you know, you'd only hear it from Andy and that would just be mumble mouthed. I mean, the main thing is, did they get the, did they get the footage? Like, did, was, did, did it sound right? Did it look okay? I'm sure it does. Which, I mean, I was kind of roped into it, but then yeah, I was as as you, super. As as I heard you were doing the sound. It was like, okay, that'll be fine. Well, I was freaking out the whole time. Cause I, cause I, I didn't want, and it's like it being in a band. You don't want to be the guy that fucks up. Yeah. There was tension of like, you know, you don't want to be the one that's like, oh shit. And right before the the, the first, right before we started, I stopped everything. Good. I go, I'll hold it. And I went, and the fucking condenser mic that takes all the audio from the audience was unplugged. Whoa. Shit. But I, I, I looked and I'm Whoa. like, this doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I stopped. I go, hold on, everything. Because it was like, here we go, everyone. And marker. And I'm like, stop. And then, 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 then that just increased my fucking anxiety. Because <laughs> like, what else? What else? <laughs> we have footage and we have audio. 
So it's just editing now. At least the audio wasn't affected by the lights turning on and off. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. Floyd's uh, Floyd's plus one was leaning up against the uh, light switches <laughs> until we finally moved her over. Well, well, first Chris Castles angrily taped him down while glaring at her. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this because of you. <laughs> how, how long did it take you to put that haunt together? Because you had to do the Andy thing, and then well, right, your brother came. My brother fucking rocked it. I, I mean, it, listen, it, this is... I don't like to have a lot of people around, because I don't like to keep telling people what to do. Like Chad, Jason Fury, and, and, and anyone else who... Like Joby. I'm like, if I need you, I'll call you. But if, but if I if there's too many people around, then I'm worried about what like why why they're there. But that's yeah. why Brett Erickson who's, was great. Who's unemployed? Yeah, that I'm I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I thought it probably and, was. And Brett Erickson you goes, didn't want a bunch of people going. What do I do now while you're trying to do so shit? So for yeah. four or five days beforehand, we put a actual roof on the facade, and it's freestanding. So it's nothing. There's no pressure on those on those four by eight plywood. You know the the, the what looks like a house. So that. Like was mostly Gil and I, and then Brett, and Brett, and then my brother got here and hit the ground running. Oh, Gil, yeah, hey, grab that, but, but Brett, hit. and Brett saw. You know, it's really, uh, it, it, it's one of those things where uh, I know Shaley. If he wants me to tell him to do something, if he wants me to do something, he'll tell me to do something. He's not shy about it, and so I'll just stand there until he's, and I go, I love that, and he goes, and. Clearly, your brother has no compunction <laughs> to do the same thing with someone he just met for the second time in 10 years. <laughs> and that's that's what it was. It was just, and then I could do the things I needed. We finished, Hennigan, you and I were talking. Yeah. And, and talked to everyone who was there. We finished a day early to where I could actually work on sound and lights the it day was before. So amazing. Chaley let, uh, he, because I was out of town and the in laws are here, Chaley left it open. So I did get to, See it and go through it at night. That the the fog thing. Amazing, was, amazing. You should have told me to come over. I would have screamed at you guys and completed well, the effect. Chad, what I did was, is I we I my brother Ghostwright. I I my brother. They they did a move this year, and we went out there earlier before we went on tour and everything. And it, they they were just so swamped. They were eight weeks behind because they couldn't move into their new place in Boise. And it was one of those things where I'm like, look, just cancel our order because the scarecrow bodies and then the life size butcher black knife knob, which was the Chad body. And then he just sent it out. He sent that and a ton of other shit and just fucking sent it. Right. <laughs> so I took that body, which was the photo op that Hennigan was taking pictures with. Yeah. I put that in the butcher room. And I have that backlight. Yeah. So then I would just last night when we when we did the thing, I ran into like three positions. <laughs> so I would I would get finished and they would go by me and I would run to the next one, a shortcut, and then they would get by me again. And I go, Tracy, hold them up at the door because I need time to get to the refrigerator. And then I would scare them there. And then Ron's looking at the at the things on the table. I go, I can't get by him. I can't get by him because he's blocking my way to get to the the butcher room. <laughs> and then I get up there and I just totally I hit the hit everything. And it's basically this big hulky big body silhouette. with the eyes are above the top of the of the door. It is that. I mean, yeah. that's how big that yeah. character is. Yeah, and it was. Uh, yeah, I think Mother was the one because she was really scared. Like she's across. getting under the fog, like yeah. she's getting <laughs> underwater to look yeah. for sharks, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the swamp. Yeah. And then when when the fake you came out, she goes, "Yeah, he's not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's not that tall. <laughs> she wouldn't walk by me." <laughs> and when I was in the scarecrow, that was the Brett Erickson position. He goes, "I go, hey, I, I know it's kind of uncomfortable." And he goes, "I love this. I'll always come back." It was so much fun because he was controlling a couple of things too. And it was a, it was a thing where he was the last scarecrow. You don't know which one, but then she looked at my fucking shoes. I didn't, I had my goofy shoes on glow in the dark laces, but she still wouldn't walk by me. And then I'm like, still scared. And and I'm like standing there with my arms up and I'm like, just keep, just go. I got to get to the refrigerator. And then she basically had to grab my arm to test it. She still didn't know. Even I had the shoes on. 
Yeah. That's that. I think that's the perfect part about that. That part of the scare is that you, they all look so realistic yeah. that you've convinced yourself the first one's real, and you're like, no, the second one's real. And by the time you get to the third one, you've probably convinced yourself that none of them are real, yeah, and yeah. then the third one's real. I love that Shaylee says they were. We were done a day early. But he just discounts all of the actual the other work. The, they were the, still the production hard value that you put when I into got that. here. Like there was still like these guys were going hard when I got here an hour Full before full days kickoff. Yeah, these guys are that. But see, yeah, we were that was a luxury. That whole last day was yeah. sweet, man. It's we a, could do makeup this year for the first time. That's why Tracy ended up doing extra. Tracy had a full beard. My brother put a beard on her. It's, yeah. It was the first time, too. I always just get so excited about getting to fucking be. Well, I, one thing that I really like is that we've decided that I'm scarier with no mask. <laughs> and if you're going to have a Halloween goal, I mean, that should, I guess, be the one. Where, like, eh, let's don't put a mask on you. You look uh, way more psychopathic if we just dump blood on your head. Well, I do dump a lot of blood on uh, you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I've always enjoyed it, but I, 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 get, I started thinking about, like, it's like a... a a, pr- a show, you know what I mean? It's a it's, it's a exactly presentation, it with, but I, I hadn't thought about it in that way before. Yeah. Oh wait, I heard you, I, I heard you had to run some young toughs off. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell, like in the first room or two, this is gonna be a problem. And I get on the radio from my brother. He goes, "Yeah, this these guys, there's they're uh, they're bumping into everything. They're they're touching everything." And Brett Erickson is positioned in the hallway, and he's the fourth body up on the wall as a scarecrow and he's the scare out of the room and by the time they get there they got one kid who's probably 14 with a backpack and then a bunch of other younger kids and at one point he goads one of the kids to like give Erickson a good punch in the gut <laughs> <laughs> and then I hear from Erickson like, yeah they're, they're a problem and then I'm I'm in the refrigerator now, and by the time they get to me, they're touching everything. They're rocking into the walls and stuff like that. How but, old? I startled them. Well, they, they, like 14 to 15. 14. Yeah. yeah. The oldest kid was probably about between 12 and 14 somewhere. But, yeah, the younger kids were being goaded by, by that kid. No, <laughs> <know> that kid. <laughs> no masks. No, yeah. like, Halloween. Yeah, they were. They well, were no, the, like the, Cholos. the kid. What? No, the, hey. No, Did the, they go through more than once? Because I had to run some cholos no, that was out another, that had to That was up. another group. Oh, okay. But the, There's the, multiple cholos here in Bisbee. The kid, the oldest oldest kid had a backpack on like he was just at school. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, true. but by the time they got to the refrigerator, he just like, like throws open the fridge, which is, they're touching, I can hear on the radio, they're touching things all the way. And I came at him with this Auga gun. <laughs> it just blasted him, scared the fuck out of him and threw him back. But then I shut the door, and then he opens it again, and then that was it. I just I walked him straight. I stopped everything. Didn't they rock the refrigerator, out. is what I heard. Yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, it, it moved With forward because he that? pulled it so hard. Oh, all right. yeah. I thought they were rocking it like yeah. A, I mean, we were like stu- at a porta potty, like, like yeah, someone like a, stuck like in a porta potty. Somebody jackass too from <laughs> two thousand and six. <laughs> I didn't know any of this shit was going on, and I come out screaming. Shaylee's hurting them out. <laughs> oh I, fuck! I, I was taking photographs at the end, and uh, oh, it's very bizarre because these kids suddenly come like out running out in a bizarre way, and then Chili suddenly appears, shouting, "Go away and never come back." <laughs> And I was thinking, is this an act? Is this some sort of? I, did I not get cued in on this? And then, you know, and then Chad comes running down, and he's like, "I'm gonna fuck them up." And, uh, and, 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 and then, but the, but in true Hollywood fashion, you were like, "I'm gonna fuck these. Where are they?" And like, "I'll kill them." And then you went, "Oh, look at that line." And then you ran back up. You ran back up. And I, I need to get to my I, one. I remember what, what I said was. Why didn't anybody tell me? I don't give a fuck. I'll hit a kid. That's right. You said that. <laughs> and the parents were standing right there with the kid. They had parents there? Yes. Yeah, and the parents, the parents were standing to the side. And uh, and my, my girlfriend, who was assisting me, Aubrey, heard the, one of the parents say to them, why do you always ruin everything? <laughs> 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 but but I did notice there was a giant lion over and then, there. I, did, and then I had went, to get back to my like, station. Oh, I don't fuck them up. Oh, look at that. People are coming to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, and I, I know I've, I've bored everyone with this observation, but I love the idea that there are people in this town who think this is normal. 
that every small American town has a state-of-the-art haunted house, you know, and they'll go and visit their friends in some other state, and they'll say, oh, we're going to go to the local haunted house, and they'll turn up, and it's somebody with a mangy cat, and it's got, like, a a, a broken Barbie arm start, strapped on it, and there's somebody, some, some one of the less, like, less well-developed members of the family is playing Operation <laughs> under a ghost sheet, and they're like... <laughs> And they're like, where's the laser swamp? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Are you scared yet? <laughs> Boo. It's the laser. And full, si- full size candy bars. It's enough right there. That's One would think. You're right, though. The whole thing is uh, like a museum. You go through there, and there's a, there are things that would be used on a movie set. <laughs> You're like, is that a fucking dead person? Yeah, did uh, you even put that up on uh, next door? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I was did advertising. Say fucking thank you. Like, oh, my God, no. Well, I mean. <laughs> oh, my God, no. <laughs> the people I know say, say something. And then the kids who come back through again. They're, so they're halfway scared. through the haunt, we said to Carrie Mitchell, uh, who's who's who? If anything, is a middle manager that never quite made it because she's great at being a middle manager and observ- observing all the things that need to be done and not doing them. <laughs> uh, but she's brilliant. She's brilliant because she no, it's Castle Rock Kenny because we're at the end. We're we're sitting at the end, and it's like, well, we should be giving out candy too. Oh, fun. your station was the photo op at the yeah. end. So once they the once they finished the haunt, Hennigan and Aubrey would set them up. For a photo with the the butcher, the yeah. uh, photo op. Yeah, and so we get the so we go we got additional candy brought to the end uh, to give out to people, and it was just amazing to watch people like like we take their picture. They've already they've been through the entire fantastic hunt. It's like oh, and here's some extra candy, and they'd like sort through it in a sniffy manner like <laughs> oh, oh what, well what exactly are we how what how dare you insult us with this trivial candy now <laughs> oh well you know what i i will take these two bits and then just walk off without saying thank you <laughs> it was just it's it is sad I think. yeah <laughs> because it's a labor well, of love for that's, sure. That's what I was thinking during the whole thing because I was like, this, because I, I could watch Brian and I could see the people exactly what you're talking about. And he's got, he's got like set up, there's a, a whole photo station and then there's like a, a board that they've written on. Here, you can go here. To on, get your where, photos, where, yeah. where can they go? People could probably look at those, I guess. It's probably a problem. At thing, the same but. time, what, what, what did make it worthwhile was that there was like every now and then you get a group who came out and their sheer joy and exhilaration was palpable. They were like, oh my God, that was fantastic. And there's little, uh, one group went through three times and every time they came out, they were like fucking yeah. ecstatically thrilled. Those are the ones you know, that are, make and it worthwhile. And therefore, their emotion was thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah. it's the ones that were trying to be a ungrateful and too cool for school. Yeah. Like, yes. oh, big deal. Agreed. One of my favorite ones is whenever they got down to you guys, and we hear, uh, I hear uh, the mom, "Did you pee your pants?" Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I'm shouting over to Tracy or the fan. Yep. Kid peed his pants. Pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fantastic. Yeah. It's uh, well because uh, Halloween was midweek fucked me all up thursday night uh but uh our neighbor had a party a halloween costume party the saturday before which is kind of like what the the conundrum that the the bars are in it's like you got a thursday night halloween how do you capitalize do you do 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 it the first and the second on the friday and saturday or do you do, do it the week before and they they had their their party the week before the week before, with a live band, you know, the Airbnb on the oh. corner, three doors down, and that uh, was the band. The band. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been the same turnout. <laughs> Good night. And I, I can hear the band playing, and I say, I'll stop by. And uh, but I was working, and I was, I was writing, and but I kept hearing the band I, and then I came out and there's a bunch of people out here in the fun house. And I go, we should just do a walkthrough. It's about to end. Uh, just, we had the Bretzels who were, were just showed up too. So we, yeah. had, a, we had a bunch so of people. So we had like seven people or something. Yeah. So we went down there and no one had showed up for their party. They said over the entire night, six people had. Oh come no. And go. Oh. 
Uh, so, yeah, th the fact that people showed up for your haunted house, way better <laughs> than you hire a live band, <laughs> get snacks, and yeah, we walked in, and then they were playing their last song, and Aww. we get to clap. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> Does it make it more awkward to drop in and leave? Well, like, oh. well it was over. It's it's over. Thank, that there. It was yeah. over. We were just going to do a walkthrough and say hi to a bunch of people. And no, nope, there was not a bunch of people to say hi to. You want a drink? You want a beer? No, no. We we're just uh, uh. supporting the community. <laughs> But that's, that's why we don't book Halloween weekend. It's the worst night for comedy because everyone wants to dress up and go to a you know, place to... It's about them. Yeah. Halloween is... Uh, unless you have a fucking haunted house. Yeah. That was fucking brilliant, Chaley. Uh, yeah, it was Thank amazing. You. It was amazing. I'm just glad it, it, it's, it is actually fun because of all the work that goes into it. Like, like I said, four or five days was just getting that roof together. After that, it, it came together in like three days. A lot of the town folk just showed up to see a well-built built structure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're. A completed project. Yeah. You're going to leave it up this year, right? <laughs> yeah, that's why we built the roof the way we did. Yeah, this right. is a, yeah, yeah, that roof is solid. Yeah. There were three of us on it shingling. We put shingles on it, Doug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Glad I wasn't here. Glad I had that book excuse. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm glad you got to see it, and uh, I, yeah, hope you don't, I hope you don't mind we do it. Cause no, I don't mind. I just hate that I, I don't ever appreciate it. and Because uh, usually, I don't know if it's been my state of mind, but every, like, the last three years anyway, I remember once, like, no, uh, this is like, it was one of those, no, I have to be sober tonight. This is too many nights in a row. This is like a life or death hiding out in the, the little house. Mm -hmm. It uh, wasn't last year because I was no. That was I think that was a year. Uh, Beckers didn't live here, and they yeah. but they were here. Mm. So that'd be like. Three and I'm like, or four sorry, years. I just can't. Three. I can't go out. And uh, and last year I was up here. I remember because we had some after party. I just did that. I don't know, <laughs> but accidental after party. I'm not really someone who wants to be around fucking children. I get it. Ugh. I mean, I really, the the happiest well, moments are when I hear kids scream. Well, <laughs> That's well, a then, weird thing. Well, then you should apply for a job because I get to be covered in blood and scream at them. That's what you need to do. It's a lot more fun than being around them. It just, I think it's the amount of work that you do. I don't like I to be around work. Listen, I, I feel bad because I always tell Shaley, I'll help you with anything you guys need. Let me know. I'll come by and help you guys. And yeah. never once he's, and Shaley says, just show up on the night of Halloween and fucking be the butcher. That's all I need you to do. And I feel guilty about just, that's all I do because I, I enjoy I it so you. much and I see how much work goes on around. But I'm like, well, if I'm, if that's my part, I had I'm just doing enough it. people on the job site to get it done. Yeah. And like I said, in my mind, we were ahead of schedule. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. Compared to last yeah. year, amazingly. Yeah. So I mean, we we dialed in sound. We had lights focused the night before. I mean, all of that doesn't usually get done. So if if I needed help, I would say I would call someone right to on. come over. But you know, with with the people that I had, it was enough that my brother was running one crew, and I was able to do the other things that I do, and it it worked out really well. I like the year that we did two nights. Uh, if you ever think about doing that again, well, I would next be Halloween, two nights. Friday, is, Saturday is a Saturday. Uh, wow! Oh, shit. Yeah, because uh, it's a uh, leap year. Is yeah, the oh. presidential. So election. I was thinking Thursday, because then the kids go to school on Friday and tell Tyler everyone. Oh, yeah. Friday, Saturday. Yeah. So it would be a three night. This is like I me doing football where I go, how do I get more people in here for football so I can spend more money <laughs> giving them free drinks <laughs> and snacks? Uh, I stopped doing that after a while. You enjoy screaming at them the same way I do. <laughs> well, Doug, you know, the haunted house, we've talked about this at length, uh, is really just a promotional tool for the Doug Stano podcast. <laughs> So, I mean, everyone who enters, I mean, they're they're very appreciative of the podcast and uh, and it being available at a free status. And the Patreon members also appreciate the the haunted house. 
I scared several people that screamed, I love the Duck Stanhole Podcast! It's great, I'm yeah. a Patreon member! Yeah. I do remember that happened now that you mentioned that. Shit. So, that, that, is, that is a benefit. We get a little perk from that. I'm sure we'll see a spike. <laughs> what do we got coming up? We got uh, Florida probably be already done by the time this gets out. No, this is going out tonight. Oh, really? Whoa. Yeah. Fuck, This Jaylen. is Wednesday. Well, it might as well. Yeah, sure. The other one is Evergreen, and that can go out whenever. All right, good. So we've got, uh, if you go to DougStandup.com, hit on tour dates. We've got Florida, which is this, uh, a week, next week. Hannigan would know. Are we sold out in Florida? No. All right. It's West I, Palm. I, I, the one that really panic, like, the, if you haven't bought your tickets for Tampa, you better get them fucking quick. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the other ones, yeah, you got a little bit more time, but. Yeah. We've got West Palm on the 12th. We've got Orlando on the 13th and Tampa on the 14th. Yeah. And then Hawaii. Hawaii and then Las Vegas. And Vegas, Vegas, Vegas will definitely sell out. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't got your tickets for Vegas, the, get them immediately. The hotel is definitely already sold out. I'm going to be <laughs> down the fucking block. So. Oh, you're coming? Yeah. All right. I'm so out of the loop on what the fuck is going on here. Yeah, I'm going to get it. It's our anniversary. I'm going to take Jenny. Oh, yeah, that's if right. We, uh, you usually do have, the Sierra Vista. Yeah, well, you usually do the you're, Tucson you're, double chew. That's, oh, that's Stan, right. I told Stan Hope before when, uh, <laughs> that during the whole Andy thing. That's why he doesn't remember, but I told him we're going to go. He goes, I'll try to be as entertaining as the double tree. <laughs> <laughs> Was, were, were you met or you were married on the 31st or what? Uh, we got married on the 1st. Aww. So technically midnight is our anniversary. So that's our date night that we get to go we go to the double tree in tucson you should, you should the drive, airport you, you should drive your new truck down fremont street oh i got <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> a, that's a local only truck there you can't get that very far that's an old motherfucker <laughs> fremont isn't a street you can drive down is it that's, that's why i recommend it that oh. would be funny I, he saw my giant push guard on my bumper i think and he's thinking that i could probably mow a Cow bunch catcher? of people down yeah yeah we already have a 2020 dates coming up. Uh, Seattle, and Baltimore, and Boston are up there, but we're adding them all the time with Hennigan's yep. were, diligence. Yeah, I mean, there's, the, you know, the, yeah, everything is coming up. All the major cities in the states, and we're already looking at um, the UK and Ireland and elsewhere for later in the year. Yeah, huh. so, so get on Doug Stanhope. Get, uh, get, get on the mailing list. Yeah, yeah. everything uh, today. Hey. I, you never seem to play Denver. Yeah, well, I do in a rotation. Yeah. Denver will be coming. Atlanta will be coming. Uh, more Texas dates are coming. Yeah, you yeah. I mean, we Less just Harrisburg, just... Pennsylvania, more <laughs> places with the, uh, uh, that are hub cities. <laughs> yes, we will be in Portland, et cetera. Et cetera. Salt Lake, Boise. Sign up to the mailing list. And make sure, you, again... Uh, Sorry, I just said Boise was a major city. No, but we'll, <laughs> we're going to get there. It's it is now that it's a Stanhope city. Yeah. It's a Ghost but, Ride yeah, Productions city. Ghost Ride Productions. Big employer. Yeah. It's no Marquette. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> <laughs> and again, what, were, what was the gig we were talking about where we... Oh, the bowling alley in Richmond, Oh, my Virginia. God. My first move to the States. Like... And one of the first tours we ever booked was it was a genuinely a bowling like it wasn't a bowling alley the one in not like that picture yeah not not like where you're playing a room that's connectors to the bowling alley we showed up at the gig and an hour Doug late was, Doug was playing at the end of a lane <laughs> <laughs> they shut down a lane to put yeah. comedy yeah, yeah. There were, and we were late did they shut down the other lanes from bowling I didn't even have ladies time to and get gentlemen it. on lane twenty three <laughs> Doug Stanhope. <laughs> I was at the end of a lane, and the audience is obviously back in the fucking bowling seat, <laughs> yeah. spread sideways, oh, so I can't even funny. see. Oh, my God. Oh, and and they had given us the wrong time, so we showed up, and they had stretched all the local openers, <laughs> waiting, so I didn't even have time to, like, get hammered to do this. I had to do this vaguely sober. <laughs> it was the worst. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, that was some. And then, of course, the, I got to Charlotte, and I I had an eye episode and had to get flown back, evac'd back to LA. So the, I left Doug in the. Hennigan has like the worst eyes ever. Had. So had well, had. They're, still, they're still susceptible, shall we say? The point was, I had a scare in Charlotte, the the one and only time I've ever been through there, and literally had to say to Doug, say to Doug, 
I have to fly to LA immediately. Like Look, literally immediately. You know what I remember about that night well, oddly? Is that night before the show in the hotel is the one and only time that I watched TMZ. And, and I was so irate. That's what that, that whole <laughs> bit about. <laughs> that one instance of watching it. Yeah. Uh, it's all it takes. Finally became a bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Weird the things you cherry pick in your memories. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice to have a couple. <laughs> Memories. <laughs> that it? Issues with Andy every Friday on YouTube. Oh, it's, you get it down to a day. Oh, yeah. It's always oh, no, released it's, on it, Fridays. It's always come out on Fridays. Oh. It's almost like uh, people learned from this podcast how to do things <laughs> in an organized fashion. We did go out late last week because uh, we did it live here in the Funhouse. And then we had to get the video uploaded through YouTube to the guy that edits it. And that took three days. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Which is, it was just easier for you. Just go home when you go home and hand it to the guy. I, I remember seeing Erickson's computer with the loading sitting here in the bar. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. So that's every Friday we record on Wednesdays. And uh, yeah. It's a it's, lot of fun. It's going fun. Dad, it's did a- you have anything you want to plug? No. <laughs> do you have any llamas you wish to sell? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. dad, dad showed up and he didn't have a baseball hat, so he asked Bingo if uh, she had one. And he so he's been wearing uh, for his Bisbee stay uh, a bright green and white trucker cap that says "I love titties and beer." I admired it from the moment I walked in. <laughs> and then Gay, mother's name is Gay said to him, but you don't like beer. You don't drink. You should cross that out and put uh, butts or something. <laughs> Titties and butts. <laughs> Titties and butts. New phrase. Oh, God, watching them kind of haggle during the thing we recorded earlier. No, no, Ron. Ron, that's not how it happened. <laughs> that's why we record. Uh. Yep. Well, if uh, uh, if we're plugging uh, your, stuff, yeah, your, uh, uh, subscribe at uh, twitch.tv uh, slash, uh, was that forward slash, backslash, mm-hmm. uh, slash. Uh, no, slash, HD underscore fatty. Just go to my Twitter, at HD fatty. My pin tweet will give you explicit dest- destructions on how to get there. <laughs> and uh, give me a lot of subscriptions so that way... Uh, while Stan Hope's on the road in 2020, I can afford to uh, pay my own way to go and podcast. With when them. I was watching it tonight before the <laughs> the folk showed up, I was like, like, if you're one of those sad, lonely people that, hey, your podcast it makes me feel like family. Oh, your Twitch stream, you'll feel like closer oh, family. Oh, we've uh, we we've built a, a nice uh, dark niche lonely market out of your already dark niche lonely market for certain (laughs) so uh you'll be uh, noticed and recognized it's a it's a family of weirdos yeah don't get it too big the great thing well the great thing is that well we have about 13 viewers on average so i mean i don't think it's gonna be huge but uh, like uh i got a bump from the last uh podcast that went out because i just did it earlier like said i was on the thing like 235 subscribers i have right now which is a a, a I put that ad in. to me. So, I mean, thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate mm. it. We, we did yeah. that cutaway. And I, I didn't even get in. noticed. I, I My handle is from last October when I signed up Sober Stanhope because it was Sober October. <laughs> and I checked in and no one even noticed I was there. <laughs> yeah. I, I once, so I know I, what it feels like, yeah, you listener. Yeah, I once, I once checked in and asked a couple of questions. And there's just a blanket ignored as, as a him and Jason Fury chuckled over killing people. That's not you know? true at all, because I remembered when you were there, Hennigan, because I said, is that really Brian Hennigan? And then I said, wait a minute, who would impersonate Brian Hennigan? <laughs> I would. So, I they thought it was a cop. I thought, yeah, I thought maybe it was James Inman. <laughs> yeah, the main, thing, the main thing is, Chad, you definitely have to get dialed into the habit, which I have now, of every time there's a mass shooting somewhere in the States, you immediately check the subscriber base so you can delete them and pretend they had nothing to do with you. <laughs> Block them. Well, yeah. I'm doing the opposite. I'm using uh, video uh, evidence as an alibi. So uh, don't second guess my scam. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just turned around and saw all the shot glasses that never get used. Oh, they we don't do used. shots. Oh, my God. And I go, used. oh, I, that's why I had to leave town. Ericsson's were here. Shots were oh, being done. Yeah, yeah. The Brechels. Yeah, sorry if I missed you. And anyone who's trying to contact me, uh, it's not you. It's me. I got shit to do, and I'm trying to be responsible. Yeah, leave him alone, for fuck's sake. I got some good shit written. Mm-hmm. It's very good. Proud of you, sir. Not a lot. Not enough. But I'll keep going. Mm. Yeah, this special will be coming out. Brian and I have talked about it. We're just trying to find the right avenues to do. Yeah. Right on. I guess that's it. Henry Phillips, anything? No. (laughs) Napping. Don't fucking get on my purple couch. (laughs) All right. Uh, Thank you. Do we, uh, how do we get out of this? Oh, bingo. Bingo takes us out. Bingo. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.